everybody. CW here. So, 6.506. We had some problems last time I was out with the hard bolt lift. I am done a little research and a lot of thinking about it, and I've convinced myself the problem is the brass. Still not 100%, but I'm 98%. So what I did was I bagged all that brass, deprimed it, you know, got it ready for reloading again, but bagged it, labeled it. It's been fired at least four times anyway. So I set it aside. I really think that for whatever reason and however it happened, whether it's bad brass or I made it bad, I think the problem lies in the brass. Because after the video, before it started raining, I fired off about seven or eight 142 grain Hornadies. I believe they were loaded with 48, 31 as well. They clocked 30, 25 average. 30, 29, 90 to 31, 30 something was what the average was. Um, I think I think I had as high as 30, 130 and my lowest I think was just under 3,000. 30, 30 and my lowest was just under 3,000. Um, doesn't fare well for a extreme spread, but that's not what this was about. It was just about the velocity, meaning pressures were up with a 142 grain bullet and every single one of them, the bolt lifted just as slick as can be and opened and closed just as nice as pie, just as nice as pie. So that really leads me to believe that it's not a pressure sign combined with the fact that we know the velocities were low on those other loads and we saw the shiny spots on the brass case heads and not every single one of them did it. I had a couple of pieces in the middle that lifted and cycled just like normal. So really, really pushed me to believe that it's the brass. Now, this caliber is actually what really got me going and believing and understanding exactly what annealing does. Because that was back in the 90s. And this was the first cartridge that I really had problems with. Splitting necks and such. I had I had built the 35 Whalen in 87-88. But for whatever reason, I never had split neck problems with that. That's necking up 3006. And brass was available just a short time after I did it because 87 or 88 was the year Remington legitimized the 35 Whalen. So brass and, and reloads and loaded ammo were available. I know I have some new brass that I bought then because I remember buying like five boxes to have factory brass head stamped shortly after I made that rifle. This one here, A-square did leg legitimize it, but I've never seen or been able to... I never really looked hard to buy their brass. Um, probably Starline making it for them, I don't know. So I've always used somebody else's. And I bought like 10 or 12 boxes of Winchester back in the day, 150 grain silver tips, 3006. And I pulled them, and just use the brass. And that's the brass I've been using since. But I don't shoot this a lot. So it's, like I say, that, that one batch of brass, I believe, is four times loaded. So here's another batch of brass. This is, I believe, three times loaded. Now this is neck turned, annealed. And it is Winchester. It happens to be uh, primed already and ready to go. But I think I'm going to bag this and just set it aside as suspect. Just, just as a precaution. 
what I've got here and over here that I'm working on. I just finished these. These are once fired Federal 270s that I've resized to 6.506. Just got finished trimming and deburring. If you don't know, 270s are a little bit longer than any of the other 06 cases. You can see there how much has to come off. The one on the right is the is a trimmed piece, and this is a raw 270, just sized to 6.5. So it's a bit of a pain, but I've got five left. So I just figured I'd do them here while I'm talking to you. Um, I do have a um, motorized trimmer, but it, it's kind of big, and I can do this. Number one, I've only got five left, but number two, it's, uh, I've only got, uh, I'm right to the end, and it's all set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo that last ladder, maybe not 100% verbatim, but I'm going to do at least, at least one or two bullets for each of those loads, 47 and a half up to 50 grains. I don't have a lot of those bullets left, which is why I can't do a full ladder, but I've got enough to do that. Maybe now that I'm just talking to you guys, maybe oh, I just see here, there's a split. There's a split neck. Let's see if I can let you guys see this. Just I just spied it sitting there. Let me zoom you in. Hold on. See it? That's how I spy a lot of them. And this is what happens. Now this isn't this is an annealed case. I can just see. I can just see some colors. It doesn't really come through in the viewfinder, but I can just see a little bit of color there. Now this is a Winchester case, I'm sure. Yeah. And it's got a split in it. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just Winchester. You know, we know Winchester isn't so great. Um, Winchester today isn't isn't Winchester that earned our respect with the Winchester name. That's for damn sure. That's the biggest reason that I'm going to try Federal. Now, Federal, you can say what you want about it. I've always liked Federal Brass in the past. I have recently had some issues with it, um, 223, loosening primer pockets. It seems like whenever I get loosened primer pockets, I look at the case and it's a Federal. So I don't know if it's just 223 or it's newer Federal, but that's what I'm finding. So I hope it's not going to carry over into their rifle line. Because I'm thinking soft brass is the problem for the hard bolt lift, that sticky bolt lift. Anyway, so I'm going to load up the exact same loads with this brass. Um, probably the probably the brass brass. I'll save this nickel stuff for maybe hunting loads or something else, and then I'll load up this with the same exact same exact charge label that as old brass label this as brand new brass and then if this brass does the same thing i can i can try another brand of brass but i think if this brass does it it's probably not too soft because this is this is once fired factory brass I'm not going to anneal it. I'm not going to touch it this time. Now you've watched me anneal. And I, I just, I have a hard time believing. I can't rule it out because facts and problems just point to that. But I anneal in my fingers. I hold the brass and I run the, the neck and shoulder in the flame. I do it with the lights off until I get just a straw color. Just a little bit, just coming just glowing and i count the seconds i do a few of them and i get an average and it usually runs six to six to nine seconds six to eight seconds and then i turn the lights on and then i just do it by seconds 
in my fingers. So how how can the brass get so hot that it's softening the case head if I'm holding it in my fingers? My answer is it can't. Yeah, it gets warm. And a couple times, you know, you watch me do it, and some of the some of the viewers, Julio, I think, commented last time, oh, that one got hot on you. And, and some of them do, but they don't burn me. They just, you know, get it out of your fingers. It's getting warm. But by and large, most of them do not. I just chuck them in the water and everything's fine. So I have a hard time believing that I've overheated that brass head because I'm holding it in my fingers. But it's really pointing towards soft brass, soft case heads. So this is going to be a test to prove or disprove that could be the problem. I've got enough of these 140 grain ballistic tips left to do that. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I just wanted to bring you along and talk a little bit, a little bit of a bench chat. And uh, we're not going to do any reloading. We're just trimming these cases. I'll deburr this. And uh, what do I want to do next? I already got the primer pockets cleaned. I guess they are ready for loading. These primer pockets are cleaned already. I can uh, I can set up the powder measure and make those charges and possibly possibly get there this week, which means you guys should see the video in a few days. I am quite a bit out on my videos um, ahead. Right now it is the 13th or 14th of May. And I know I've got videos posted until the 6th or 7th of June. So this is going to be probably the 8th to the 10th you'll be watching this of June. And I should be able to have the range video within a day or so of this video, of your watching this video. So you'll know right away. And we'll see what happens. And uh, I hope I hope it's the case because... Uh, I don't see how it can be lug setback. That's a real thing. Basically what it is, is it's, it's a rifle that's been shot a lot. Um, the lugs in a typical bolt action are two lugs in the front and they go forward and they rotate. Well, when you fire, those lugs hold everything. They hold the bolt from moving, they hold the pressure, they hold the case forward, they hold everything. And what happens is they they pound on the receiver. And what it does is, to oversimplify, they dent the receiver. You don't feel it when there's no load. You just cycle the bolt and you don't feel it. You don't know anything. But when that bolt, when that bullet fires, that brass, that uh, bolt lugs set back. They set back into those little notches. And they pretty much are held there because of the pressure of the cartridge going off. You know, the gas is expanding, blowing out the brass, and holds it to the rear. So when you go to lift it, it doesn't want to lift. You get hard bolt lift. That's bolt setback. And generally, it's only seen on military rifles that have seen, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. You generally don't find it on commercially available rifles unless there's a heat treating problem with the manufacturer and pretty much the same for military rifles there's, a, there's some kind of problem that lets it happen but it can't happen with just a few rounds is my point and if you find that you're, you're you're pretty much done that that action is dead pretty much there's probably some way to fix it but for all intent and purposes it's it's dead it's done and it would be awful if that was the case with this rifle. But I fired a dozen rounds um, Sunday. Um, you should have already watched that video. And they fired normal. And they were over the chronograph. And they were much faster than any of the ladder loads that gave us the hard bolt lift. All of those topped out at just over 2,800 feet per second. And every load that I fired that did not cause the hard bolt lift was pretty much 
pretty well over 2800 I think the lowest was 29 something yeah 2975 or 2950 that was a 129 grain load that was loaded you know 30 years ago and those 142s were probably loaded 25 years ago so none of those caused hard bolt lift not a single one so i can't believe that it's pressure and i can't believe that there's anything wrong with the gun i truly believe that it's all ammunition and likely all brass brass problem whether it's winchester brass or something happened to that brass who knows but this should be newer there's i think 30 something cases here of nickel and there's 45 43 brass i couldn't find any more that's all i had for 270 brass in federal i got a pile of 270 brass but it's all remington peters and winchester so i could redo this with remington peters brass yeah, I could do it with Winchester, but in my mind, Winchester's already suspect, so I want to try a different brand. So, here we go. So, this is going to be a Federal. So, that's that's my idea. That's my test. I've talked to you for 15 minutes. Let's close out this video and uh, just call it a bench chat, loading, loading 6.506 and trying to work out problems from the last range session. So, God bless you if you stick this long. I um, hope all you have a great day. I will talk to you on the next video. Yeah.